Episode 7 of Story of Park's Marriage Contract begins with a scene involving a stranger in a mask given instructions by Hysuk to keep adding what's assumed to be poison to Teha's food. The guardian angel is right. Time is repeating itself right now. Could Teha suffer the same fate and end up poisoned? That certainly seems like it, but for now he does recover. When Teha regains consciousness following his attack last episode, he explains to Yun Wu that the woman in the annex was actually his mother. She died and the person who left her there was Hysuk. She gaslit him and blamed Teha for what happened, and Teha was forced to endure a terrible weight because of her words. Yun Wu comforts him and wraps her arms around Teha, telling him that she'll do her best to lift that boulder off of him. While Yun Wu updates Sawul over what's been going on and how Teha is in danger from his mother in law, Teha speaks to the historian, who explains that this Yun Wu from the past is recorded as having jumped into a well after her husband died. In between these serious moments, we get some lovely humor as both Teha, with Hong, and Yun Wu, with Saul, are teased over their feelings for their contracted partners. Teha is not happy when he finds out Hysuk is out for lunch with Yun Wu. Whilst together, Yun Wu confronts Hysuk about the past, but she's confident she didn't do anything wrong. In fact, she even hands over a gift for her which will help. Yun Wu is reluctant to take it, and even worse, she jokes about whether it could be poison. Teha shows up and takes Yun Wu away, promising that things will be different now. Well, things are definitely different when they leave. Out in the street, the pair talking Yi Zero and Wu ends up slipping and falling into his arms. The pair look into one another's eyes and Teha even blurts out that he likes her. It's a super cute moment, something that she finds herself pondering over when she's back home brushing her teeth. As for Hong, he ditches on his sister midway through shopping to go and see Saul. She has more homework for him, but she refuses to date him right now. Instead, she has a big plan to help Yun Wu and wants his help in doing so. The pair do a great job and manage to get both Yun Wu and Teha alone in the bedroom together. They lock the door, shut off the lights, and have big plans for the pair to have a steamy night together. While Teha and Yun Wu almost kiss upstairs, Hong and Saul end up kissing on the sofa in a really cute moment. However, Hong interrupts the former's kiss with big news. It turns out another company is plagiarizing SH Soul's fashion line. It could be Hysuk using an alias and trying to sabotage Yun Wu's plans. However, as the episode continues it would appear that Secretary Choi is to blame due her to jealousy. Unfortunately, this doesn't go well at work when the other workers find out. They're convinced that Yun Wu has ruined the first year anniversary event by being careless. The chairman is similarly not happy, especially after Teha's outburst last episode. In fact, he thinks Teha should step away from the event. Yun Wu and Teha do no such thing. In fact, Yun Wu is fueled by the desire to do right by everyone and she works super hard to design her clothes and do a great job to blow this first anniversary event out the water. Teha even catches her falling asleep at the table with books sprawled all around her. In the morning, Yun Wu heads out and starts sketching out her work, intending to draw inspiration for a new design. Taemin shows up though and helps her out, deciding they need clean lines and a simple structure. Yun Wu is impressed, but is quick to point out that she's only impressed with his drawing, not with him as a person. There's definitely no second lead syndrome here. Later on, CEO Medem looks over Yun Wu's work and is impressed with her craftsmanship. Yun Wu explains what drives her, including the significance of a butterfly. Medam smiles tentatively, but this reminds her of the past. Specifically, a diary which refers to Yun Wu as a butterfly. That night, Yun Wu's heart starts fluttering like a butterfly when she sees Teha waiting for her outside. He hands over a cute little moon rabbit he's won from a claw machine. He wants her to make a wish on it and the pair can't stop smiling when he hands it over. That is, until the next day. 
It turns out the date of the big event has been changed, and without any models around and the whole event hanging in the balance, things don't look good. Teha has no choice but to ask Hisuk for help in getting this event back on track. He explains later on that he did all of this for Yun Wu's sake to make sure her event isn't ruined. Unfortunately, things are made even worse when Yun Wu manages to see her clothing line. Someone seems to have intentionally sabotaged it, Secretary Choi, with slashes across the sleeves. They can't change the finale outfit now, given Yun Wu's whole line tells a significant story. So how will they salvage this? Well, the group decide to transform the clothes into a jumpsuit, which could do the trick. And as it's shown off on the catwalk, there's a lot of ooze and oss over the fashion. People love it. And the outfit right at the end is a beautiful projection of butterflies that's broadcast across Korea given the show is on TV. After the show, Hyesook speaks to Myung Soon and explains that the reason she helped with all this was to make the chairman more angry. For Teha to go against his father's wishes and shake the foundation they had further, Hyesook is using this relationship to drive her a bigger wedge between them. Backstage, TH Guardian Angel appears for Teha as he's clutching his chest and seems to have another attack. Do you now understand the repeated fate? She asks as flashes to the past bleed through and Teha sees all. 